Greetings. Welcome once again to the 2020 Rewind. We're taking a look again at some level 50 characters that I'm playing on the City of Heroes Homecoming servers. Excelsior Shard. This is episode 18, my second tanker of the bunch. His name is Hortensis. Shield defense. Psy Melee Psy Mastery. Shield Psy Psy. Hush Hush. Uh, he is going to be probably... I don't, actually, I'm not going to say probably. He is my most fun tank that I've built. Uh, and I'm almost going to put him in my top five. I feel pretty good about that, if not higher characters ever. Even though I haven't played them, but since kind of creating for this uh, this uh, this showcase here, this rewind, but he's that fun. I was took him out for a spin, and he is just everything I was planning for him, and then some. All right, let's go ahead and stop teasing this thing and just get to it. What is the build? Let's take a look at his mids build. Uh, mids Reborn. This is the character builder that we have here for the Homecoming. Uh, well, actually, for any City of Heroes game, I think is using uh, mids. But anyway, midsreborn.com, I think it is. Check it out. I'll try to put a, a link in the description below if I remember. But... Shield defense is kind of what it sounds like. You got a shield, you know, Captain America style. Uh, it's a defense-based set for preventing damage just by dodging it, deflecting it, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a little bit more to it than that. We'll take a look. Uh, it's one of the unique defense sets, armor sets, and that there's an attack in there as well. And then you've got uh, Psy Melee, which is... I think this was right near the end of City of Heroes Live time. Psy Melee came out, I think, or it was slated to come out. It was like one of those last things either just came out with issue 23 or was slated to come out with 24. I don't remember the exact timing of it. But anyway, it's a, a more recent set as far as the game is concerned. Uh, and it's an awesome set, really. I mean, it's got it's got its flaws. But it's got something so awesome in its tier 9 attack. It reminds me of uh, Psy Shockwave from the Dominators, the original version. That was so good. It was so good, it was too good, and they ended up nerfing it, sadly. Uh, the original team did that. But anyway, Mass Levitate. Really, between Mass Levitate and the attack shield charge from your, your defense armor set, I mean, that's really the one-two punch that this whole thing is going to... This whole build is going to spin around. That and Cynato from my Psionic Mastery down here. Uh, let me scoot it up so you guys can see that a little bit better. So Cynato, that's my other cool, fun thing. The other thing that this this thing is this whole character concept is built around. I think you probably know where I'm going here, if, just by those three powers alone. I've also went ahead and taken Mighty Leap, uh, from the the Force of Will set, and that gives me my my little foot stompy power, which I've talked about before a few times. Uh, that's gonna be clutch to this build. And last but not least, the third or fourth or fifth spoke of this wheel is from the Incarnate set, my old friend Mighty, Mighty Radial Judgment. If you don't know where I'm going with this, then you ain't been paying attention to the stuff I've been talking about. But this guy is going to be a bowl of popcorn. I mean, he is going to be playing pop matic with everybody, and it is freaking devastating if my initial uh messing around with this guy it was so fun i was doing some trick-or-treating stuff with him and and uh some farming with my my brute that was getting him his vet levels i actually had him kind of take over a few of the groups and just popcorn in the crap out of 54 bosses evs whatever it's hilarious uh it kind of makes this guy untouchable um uh, anyway don't want to spoil too much right out of the gate but that's kind of the the loose concept here Pop-O-Matic. All right, what's going on with shield defense? We've taken a lot of the powers, except for I did not take Phalanx Fighting. Uh, and that's the one that gives you um, bonuses by being near allies. 
gives you a little bit of a d defense bonus, but I believe it's more based upon your your allies or something. I don't know. It's just, yeah, you know, whatever. Am I going to be on a team all the time? I don't know. So it's kind of like you got to be on a team. You got to be near your allies just to get the bonuses. I don't think it's that great, but maybe I'm, I'm not understanding what the power does exactly. And then I did not take my tier 9 on this armor set. And I've done this on a few of my tanks and brutes. I don't take the tier 9. Uh, and I've explained this before in that, you know, you've got a lot of defenses, resistances, depending on what kind of set you're taking already with your first eight powers, that unless that ninth power does something above and beyond all those other things layered together, it's kind of hard to justify taking the power because, you know, most tier nines, you're going to have to take it late in your build and then you're going to want to slot it with four or five slots. And by that point, you have the slots to spare. And then the other thing about it is that with all your set bonuses you're grabbing from all your powers and stuff, you can pretty much push your normal, you know, tier one through eight stuff to cap levels anyway. Well, what's this tier nine doing for you in a lot of cases? So one with the shield, you know, it's going to give you some max HP, some recovery, and some more, you know, resistance to uh, uh, mez and damage and stuff. You know, I don't know. I mean, I've already got mez protection i already got pretty good hit points and recovery you know so i don't know is it really doing a lot obviously i didn't think so so i didn't take it but i got everything else i've got deflection that's a standard toggle uh melee defense resist smash lethal i have a toggle battle agility defense again for ranged and aoe so i have the three type def or yeah the three type defenses right there or three, sorry, three positional defenses, melee, ranged, and AoE. So I've got those covered with these two, and you get some resistance to defense debuffing, which is your, your antithesis. Then True Grit gives you an auto power, gives you resistance to elemental damage types and max health. Uh, it gives, and then you take active defense, which is your, now here's the only weakness in the builder, the, the the Achilles heel here is active defense is a click that gives you all of your, your mez protection. So you need to put this on auto fire and have enough recharge in it so that it's constantly recycling itself and not going to expire on you. Uh, that, of course, is, is the trick to it. Um, and I'm trying to think of what is the, the recharge is 70. I got it down to 73 seconds from 200 here. And the duration, I don't know why it doesn't show the duration here. Let's see if I see it over here at all. Uh, then, then 120 seconds, if I'm reading this right. So, yeah, it's going to last two minutes. So, in other words, it's recharging before it expires. That's what you need, right? So, it kind of locks you into this power being on auto fire because uh, you don't want to be trying to remember to click it because if you get held or knocked back or whatever, then it's kind of too late and trying to click it at that point. And, you know, that could be life or death scenario. So anyway, that's one drawback here. Then you got against all odds. This is a toggle. I like this one. It's, uh, I think it's also a taunt as well. Uh, but it is an aura that you have around you that boosts your damage and lowers the enemy damage while you're surrounded in combat. Uh, it's like uh, Rise to the Challenge in my Willpower uh, set tank that I just showed you. Uh, last week so anyway it's got a taunt yeah so mag for taunt to it um, it's gonna have you know your basic come over here fight me but it's also gonna give you some protection that kind of thing so that's against all odds grant cover this is a pboe team power defense to everything uh team resistance so this is similar to phalanx fighting i think but i think it's a little bit better so you're able to use your shield to defend your allies uh, any teammates who are near you, they get a bonus to their defense. And additionally, while this power is active, you and your teammates get resistance to defense um, debuffs, I think. Yeah, sort of defense and recharge debuffs. So it's, you know, granting cover to your allies, but it's going to give you defense debuff resistance, uh, recharge debuff resistance. So that's the main reason you're taking it. Not because you're not going to get much from the defense, obviously. And then shield charge is sort of the signature power of shield defense. Uh, that's your tier 8. It's an attack. So it's it's not giving you any defensive abilities. It's a you know teleport downrange 
Uh, you can teleport out to 60 feet and slam into people. Big AoE, explosion of damage, knockdown. So it's a great power. A lot of people back in the day would make um, shield electric combo because you could do lightning rod, which was a similar you know, teleport attack. And you would have this one-two punch of shield charge and lightning rod. I almost did that with this guy, but I'm like, you know what? I want to try side melee because I hadn't tried it before. And I've seen people, especially scrappers and stalkers, had it a lot. And they were just like ass kicking with mass levitate so much and the cool the side blades that were coming out and the side punches that were coming out. I was like, I want to I want that, you know, I want to I want to build around this idea of me kind of teleporting into into attack position, bam, knocking people down and then getting in there with my other boom, boom attacks uh, like mass levitate. OK, so let's go ahead and talk then about your melee set now that I've been teasing a little bit. So it's side melee. It's kind of what it sounds like. You're going to use psionic attacks. You're going to use your mind. Uh, think of it sort of like telekinetic, you know, projection type of thing. So a lot of your attacks are a combination of psionic and smashing. Uh, so you got mental strike. Uh, that's kind of like a little punch. You got psi blade, which is, you know, psychic uh, attack, uh, sharp edged weapon. So you do some lethal damage. Then TK blow, that's another punch. You got your standard taunt you got your side blade sweep there's your little melee cone that you want comes a little bit late in the set you know that's one of the the downsides here you got single target single target single target taunt and then finally you get some sort of aoe attack so this is going to be a a uh, a slower leveling build if you're you know playing it like that because you don't get your shield charged till really late and you don't get your aoe stuff like uh, sweep and mass levitate till late as well and especially if you're playing as a tanker where you've got your melee set is delayed compared to your primary you know it's going to take you a little bit longer to kind of get this thing going to the point where you're able to take down you know bulge, uh, multiple foes otherwise you're kind of standing there you know in the middle dodging attacks right and single target whooping on somebody concentration there's your little self buff damage and it's a hit boggle this one boggles my mind why it's in here uh it's a short range single target confused power uh and it has some boggle effect which i'll take a look at in a second but you know here's the thing that if you're going to have effects in a power set, they should be somehow stackable with something else that the power set does, whether it's slows or minus recharge or knock up or whatever, right? So here you are, you have a single confusion power in a melee attack, and there's not a single defensive set in the game that has confusion built into it. And none of the um, brute or tank uh, uh, epic sets, their ancillary power pools, none of those get any sort of confusion. So when or how or why would a tank brute scrapper ever get to stack confusion to make this a usable control? And then it's... Like all confusions, you know, you kind of like stand there and do your thing and confuse the target and see if it hit it. You know, as a controller, okay, that kind of makes sense. Hey, I'm standing back and I'm coochie coochie on your brain. But you're a tank, you're a brute, you're a scrapper, you're getting in there fighting. You're not like coochie 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 and trying to get someone to, to join your team. It makes no freaking sense. Now, if there was other confusion and that was kind of like the thing that side melee did is you're pounding people they get confused because you're you're up in their cabeza you know stirring it around and making yourself a a sandwich or something like that okay that would be the thing that side melee could do but throwing a single confusion boggle in there skip don't need this power now it does have this boggled effect. Um, so here's what it says. Confused foes will attack their allies. Boggle will also place the boggled effect on your target for a short time. Attacking a boggled target will increase your chance of gaining insight. All right, so that's maybe cool because uh, mental, or sorry, Psy does do insight as it's, it's little shtick that it does. Uh, let's see if we figure out what the heck uh, this does. And I just deleted my power accidentally. Uh, but anyway, so, um, for instance, Psyblade here, 
You focus on uh, you focus and create a more powerful side blade projection before slashing. Blah blah blah. Where is the insight? Removes insight. This I forget it's in here. One second, let me fix my build and then I'll I'll pull up the insight nonsense. Okay, fixed it. So here's what it says for mental strike. I think this kind of gives you the idea of what insight does. So anyway, uh, a lot of your attacks can give you insight bonuses. And so what it says is, you know, uh, with uh, mental strike, you know, you attack affected foes have the recharge rates reduced. So like all psi attacks in the game, their secondary effect is minus recharge. And I've built around that idea with other um, characters, not this one, but anyway, other ones. So you, you do this minus recharge. Then mental strike has a small chance to grant you insight, it says. And while you have insight, Mental Strike will deal additional minor psychic damage over time. Okay. This power can bruise an enemy, making them more vulnerable to damage. So it sounds like they, oh yeah, so it does have a minus resistance as well. But anyway, the Insight, I guess, sets you up to do more damage, at least with this power. And I'm imagining that other attacks might consume Insight differently. Uh, Side Blade has a chance to grant you Insight. It doesn't seem like it gets anything out of the Insight, though. TK Blow, uh, you can give yourself Insight, and this is while you have Insight, TK Blow will deal additional Psychic Damage. So it sounds like the Insight is just giving you a damage boost. Um, okay, again, great. So then if you go Boggle, hey, why don't you take Boggle? It's a great power. So Boggle, what it says, if you have somebody Boggled, uh, Attacking them increases your chance of getting insight again. I, do I need that? No, I can get insight just by pounding on them with my other powers. Anyway, I don't think it's a good power, so I didn't take it. Uh, and it doesn't make sense in the set at all. I mean, it kind of makes sense thematically, but for some sort of tanker power, this doesn't make any sense. I could see maybe something like this in the Dominator Psy uh, Assault you know, secondary set. That could be an interesting place for it but not here. Uh, greater Psy Blade. It's just like Psy Blade, except it's greater, so more damage. Uh, and then it has some other secondary effects, which we'll take a look at in a second. And then you got the big one that I wanted. This is the whole reason, in my opinion, you're taking Psy Melee, is Mass Levitate. This is absolutely ass-kickingly deadly of a power. PBAOE, huge boom, and you just throw stuff up in the air. Bunch of damage to take, smash damage, they get knocked up. Uh, if you have insight when you use this, you also cause moderate, you know, sigh over time damage. It's just a devastating knock up power. It's just, you'll just take out about six guys, eight guys. I don't know what the target cap is, but it's a lot. You're going to throw everybody up in the air. Huge power. Now, the other thing that you get from these, uh, these attacks, aside from the insight, you know, Mental Strike has some minus resistance and the minus recharge. Psy Blade has some minus recharge. Uh, TK Blow has Knock Up. Uh, then you've got Psy Blade Sweep that has a chance to stun Disorient, plus it's got the minus recharge. Uh, you've got the Greater Psy Blade, the minus recharge again, and it has a chance to hold. And then the Mass Levitate has the Knock Up. So there's actually some decent soft control built into Psy Melee again. And you could probably build around that, like some of this minus recharge, maybe get a get a hold the stack. Like you could have taken a different um, mastery set and gotten a, like, a, for instance, I think Fire Mastery has um, char in it, so you could get a hold with that. Plus the hold from side greater side blade, because this actually triggers pretty often the hold in this one, the stun and the um, side blade sweep. So you can imagine building around that as a concept. Again, that's not what I did. I'm building completely around this popcorny knockup crap that I'm going to do. I'm going to have shield charge to you know teleport in and boom, throw stuff uh, up in the air. Mass levitate, boom, throw them up in the air. I got the little mini foot stomp out of uh, Mighty Leap. And the, uh, what is it, takeoff that you get with Mighty Leap. Boom, that's going to knock people up in the air. I've got Psy Nato, so I'll talk about my, my mastery set here. So I took Psy Nato from the Psy Mastery. That has a nice knock up to it as well. It says knock back, but it's actually knock up. 
dominates a single target hold, so I can stack some holds there. I took Harmonic Mind, which is, you know, plus recovery, endurance discount, because this is going to be a, a fairly fast attacking, uh, you know, build, so I'm going to be burning through a lot of um, endurance, so I have ways to mitigate that, of course. Mental Blast, a little single target blast. I also took Project Will, so I, uh, I mentioned this in my last Tanker video, where I said, you know, hey, as a tank, as a brute, I think you should have at least two ranged attacks, if not three. So I've got Project Will, i got Wall of Force, they also fit thematically with my psychic powers here and mental blast and side nato. So I have four ranged attacks and throw dominate in there. I got five ranged attacks. Then I get all my, you know, attacks from side melee. So this guy has attack, 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 and then he's got tons of attacks. Uh, very aggressive build. He's not going to be your stand in their big old, you know, granite tank, just, you know, bringing everything on and, and surviving an onslaught. He's just going to get in there and, and boom, 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 and throw stuff up in the air over and over and over again until it stops moving. That is what this build is all about. Just, I think, crazy amounts of attacks, some debuffery, some of the soft control. It all is going to team up to be a pretty fun, exciting build. Hopefully you'll see that um, like I've been talking about. So, hey, let's take a look at some of the numbers. Let's take a look at some of the sets that I've been going for here. Let me turn off my incarnates so I can show you raw numbers at this point. So, just with my basic sets turned on, uh, incarnates are off. Just double-checking everything. Oh, I took Unleash Potential. I like that also for Force of Will. I've mentioned this thing in a couple other videos. Great um, uh, pool power set. You know, it's got it's got the travel power. It's got if I didn't take weak and resolve, it's got a nice single target debuff. It's got a single target attack with some knockdown. It's got a cone attack with some knockdown and unleash potential. That's the the tier five power in this set that does the. Um, this is kind of what I'm looking at tier nine over here. Hey, why take one with a shield when I can go over here and grab unleash potential plus regen plus recovery plus defense? To me, that's more useful than my tier nine. All right, let's look at these numbers with all that in mind. So everything turned on with the exception of like a click like Unleash Potential. So here's what I've got for totals. Uh, Defense-wise, I'm really good here with positionals, I think, with the melee range and AOE. So I'm in the 30% or so. Let me, let me zoom in on this with the pop-out window here. So I've got some really solid positional defenses. Let's get a little bit better when you I turn on my incarnates and stuff. Uh, so that's pretty solid. You know, my, my type defenses aren't as good. Uh, just in case uh, you don't understand the idea here, you really only need either positional or typed, you know, overall, because pretty much every attack I think nowadays has, you know, a position melee ranged or AOE or, or and it has whatever type of damage it deals. So if you have, let's say, high melee defense and it's also a smashing attack, it's going to attack your melee numbers first. So because I've got high positionals, really the rest of these numbers are not as important. Because uh, there, I think back in the day, there used to be damage like Psy or something like that that didn't you know target your positionals. I forget exactly what happened. But I think the modern game, since you know Homecoming is adjusted stuff and whatever, I'm almost positive nowadays that every attack that you take is going to have some sort of position plus its damage type. So whatever your higher number is, is the one that it's going to gonna target. So having, you know, 30 plus percent here is pretty solid. Now, these are not obviously cap numbers, right? You know, I'm not, I'm not pretending that they are. Uh, but again, I'm going to have that, that layered mitigation strategy coming here. So I've got really solid numbers right here as a foundation, and they're going to go up a little bit with my incarnates. So I'll be close to like 40 percent roughly. But even if I do get hit, you know, my resistances are pretty solid again. You know, not not greatest. This isn't going to, you know, tank the task force all by yourself. But you got decent numbers. You know, quarter of your damage is going to be resisted. Forty-some percent of fire cold is going to be resisted. All right, so you got overall okay numbers. This, you know, if you're looking at raw tanking ability, no, these aren't great. But I'm not building this guy as a raw tank. Everybody come to me, attack me. I'm going to go to them and freaking devastate them with my attacks. That's kind of, I'm, I'm going to use that, that blastery strategy. I'm going to use that dominator strategy, right? A good defense is a good offense. That's what this guy's going to do. 
Uh, and then what else we got here? But don't forget, I do have, like, against uh, the all odds, this power is going to help me survive as well because it is debuffing damage that, you know, people around me are trying to attack me, right? They're going to have their damage lowered. I think it is, let's see if it shows up here. Is this the damage buffing? Seven, five and a... I don't know if any of these are the specific ones, debuff numbers here, because they all say damage buff, damage buff, damage buff, so I don't know. All right, this one says minus seven, so I'm guessing that's the one that I'm applying to enemies. So in combat, the greater your offensive abilities become, uh, each enemy stands toe-to-toe -to -toe in combat will grant you a damage bonus. The first foe you engage in melee grants the highest, and up to 10 foes can contribute to that effect. Each foe in melee range also suffers from reduced damage as your shield defense deflects a portion of the attack. So I'm thinking that minus 7% is the debuff that it's talking about, and then I'm guessing maybe the 10% is the main buff, and you get the 55 for everybody else. You know, I don't know the exact mechanics behind that power, but... Point being this, hey, sure, you are got high defense, you got some resistance, but here's another power that can kind of stack with your your others to give you some of that survivability that I'm talking about uh, overall. All right, so that's one additional mitigating strategy. By itself, not going to save the day, but starting to add up with the other things, it's starting to not look so bad. Other... Uh, uh, powers that I have that are in boost up survivability. You've got True Grit sitting here. Uh, this one is going to boost up your max health, so I'm going to have a you know more sizable hit point pool. Plus, I've got it slotted with a couple of miracles, and I've got it slotted with a couple of the Numinas. So that's going to give me the regen recovery uh, boosting from those unique powers in that set. That's going to give me some more survivability. I've also got Harmonic Mind over here from my Psy Mastery set. Uh, that gives recovery and endurance discount boosting, but I have the power transfer chance to self-heal sitting in there. There's some more mitigations. I have some extra hit points coming in. I also picked up Unleashed Potential, like I said, from the Force of Will set. That gives you regen, recovery, and defense, so that's going to boost some more of your survivability, right? Uh, plus, when I click it, it's going to boost my defenses. So if we take a look at the total numbers and I go ahead and click that power, you'll see my defenses now are going up. Those positional ones are the main ones you want to pay attention to. They're going in from the you know, low mid-30s up to the mid-50s with all of them. So now, hey, I click this power. I'm looking not so shabby on my, on my ability to stand in there toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's on a 280-second recharge. And the duration is 60 seconds. So I'm down uh, for, what, 180 seconds? So three minutes without it. But, you know, how often do I need that max, you know, defense during a standard type of mission? I only need it for 60 seconds against that tight, you know, those tough bosses, that sort of thing. Uh, what else we got going on here? We've got, uh, let's see, battle agility and... Uh, deflection both every active defense sets in them and it's combat jumping yeah over here i have the other reactive defense and that's the one with the scaling damage resistance so you know hey when you start taking more damage this uh power kicks on and, and improves your damage resistance i don't know if it actually shows how it works over here at all i don't see the actual numbers there but anyway it's going to boost up your damage resistance i don't know if i shut it off if it'll show anything now uh so i think i'm not sure how to get mids to show you what this does but like i said it's going to boost your um overall damage resistance uh we'll also have for survivability up here do, do, do. i don't see anything else up there but then you come down here to health I've got preventative medicine with the absorb proc. I've got panacea with the hit points and endurance proc. And then over here in stamina, you've got the performance shifter endurance with the plus chance for endurance uh, regain. So I've got the standard, you know, unique package across all my powers with extra regen, extra recovery, extra healing, extra endurance, you name it. So all that's going to add up for more survivability on top of all the other things that I've got going on here. So my regen is, you know, 364%. You know, so I'm, I'm regaining hit points, you know, at three and a half times normal. Uh, my recovery numbers are really solid, as you can see. Let me shut off Unleashed Potential to make it a little more realistic. 
Uh, but here my drain was actually pretty high, 1.1, but I've got recovery at 3.5. So I'm I'm in that 3 to 1 sweet spot that I like to be. So this guy is not going to have much problem maintaining his toggles and all the other crap that he's running and his attack chains. And this is with Mighty Leap on. This is with Sprint on. I could shut those off if I'm you know starting to get desperate for endurance. Now I'm down to 0.6. But I usually like to leave Mighty Leap on so I can do the uh, takeoff foot swamp or foot swamp. Uh, foot stomp and then i got sprint on just for the extra mobility right to get around the battle much quicker because this guy again is going to be in and out moving around bobbing and weaving uh, probably more scrappery than tank you know uh, lots of attacks you know brutish and his just savagery i think you'll see uh, and then that takes us to our incarnates, I think. Uh, what else? Before I jump into that, let me just look at any of my sets that might be something weird. I do have winter sets here in Mental Strike, Chance to Hold, because I am going to try to get into that, um, you know, the, the uh, what you call it, the ability to sort of stack some of these controls and things. Get that pop out when they're all closed. So I got the Chance to Hold sitting here with Blistering Cold in my Mental Strike. I've got Psyblade Sweep has the tanker ATO that gives the chance for plus resistance when that one procs. Uh, I've got Mass Levitate has the other tanker ATO in it with the absorb proc. So that's going to be triggering fire away. So I got absorb going off. Then you got Mental Blast has the chance for minus speed, minus recharge, because I've got all this minus recharge being thrown around from all my Psy attacks. So hey, why not more? Uh, and then I got Cyanato has the, I didn't take the chance to mobilize because I really don't, I think as a tanker overall, you don't want targets immobilized per se. You want them coming to you as you know best you can uh, and let, let the controllers worry about immobilizing crap. So I'm not worried about that. But the winter sets are giving me the, you know, that resistance to the fire and cold that you see are pretty high from, you know, overall, I get the 44% or so. A lot of that's come from these winter sets. And I think they're also giving me a lot of um, speed, you know, debuff resistance, which remember I was also getting that from, what was it, Grant Cover? Yeah, Grant Cover is also giving me the recharge debuff resistance. So between that and my winter sets, I believe my my overall, let's see if I can see that. Check out the, I think it might be in the advanced totals. Let me just see debuff resistance. Put this over here for you guys. I think you should be able to see this if I move it over here um so the debuff resistance is speed running yeah so there it is so recharge is 75 percent so you can see it right here so recharge debuff resistance so my defense debuff resistance is 65 66 recharge and the movement speed debuff resistance is 75 you know 45 percent so i'm not going to be getting slowed down you know i'm not going to have my defense shredded so that's kind of the the bonuses there that i was was shooting for with you know, a couple of these little procs and just the fact that i've got grant cover all right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the incarnate choices that I want to head with, because this will give me the rest of the numbers for you. So uh, I want to head with agility. That's going to give you defense. It's going to give you recharge. It's going to give you endurance mod and movement speed. So this is playing into my strengths, right? I want good defense. I want high attack rates. I want high mobility. I want to be able to, to you know, recover my endurance. So, you know, I fire this guy up. It's going to, again, boost my numbers now closer to 40%. And again, when I hit that unleash potential, now I'm looking at 60% positional defenses, okay? Much better. You eat a luck or two. Now you're looking at, like, soft capping your defenses. No problem. Easy as pie, right? Lots of recovery going here. So now my recovery is, you know, 3.7 without Unleash Potential. I hit Unleash Potential. I got 5.4. So I'm, I'm recovering about, you know, four or five times normal rate with that. Then we've got Dive Magnetic. This is my debuffing interface. I'm going for the minus to hit because the minus to hit with all my attacks when that thing procs is going to give me, you know, higher survivability because I think it's what a minus 5% is what this thing stacks up yeah so minus five percent i think it stacks four times if i remember from my other uh, character my other tank i was talking about um so dive magnetic i can debuff to hit like 20 percent roughly right so 
that's going to help with the defense build like I've got here because now my enemies have a harder time hitting me and I have a high defense on top of that. Plus, it's giving me the minus regen to make those hard targets like, you know, bosses or AVs, that sort of thing, a little bit easier to take down. All right, then we went ahead with Mighty. I already talked about that. I've got the radial side for the huge knockup. Love that uh, version of it. Got my Sears again. I like Sears on my melee characters. They're really good buffing, you know, group, plus they have some decent, you know, side damage, plus they kind of fit with my concept here of a, a psychically powered dude. Uh, then I grab Rebirth, so here's yet another way for survivability. So even if I am start taking hits, people, you know, getting through my defenses, past my resistances, you know, passed against all odds, not being thrown up in the air over and over again by all my attacks, well, I've got a, I got a self-heal, I got a plus regeneration that I can go ahead and activate. You know, that's going to kick my total. Let's see, my regen is going to go up to almost 2,000%. I mean, give me a break. And then last but not least, you go ahead and got your support radial. That's going to boost damage, accuracy, defense. And I've mentioned this a bunch of times already. Special, right? I love boosting me some special. So I click this thing. Now my defenses are freaking 70%, you know, with my positionals. Type defenses are all 40% or so. So, you know. I activate this, I have my incarnates going, I eat a purple luck, I'm fine. Okay, I'm not going to take a bunch of damage, I don't need to worry about it. And if I do take damage, I got rebirth to heal it anyway. So who cares? It's not. It's no big whoop. So there you go. Got everything all working together, all intertwining. And then the defense, you know, is one thing, but you got the accuracy and damage is going to help you kill stuff faster. And then that whole special, I've talked about this a few times now. You know, it's going to help boost. Uh, I don't know if, let's see if I can find out where it's going to show some of these numbers. If I go to, do, 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 should show it in the, it's, yeah, it shows it in the endurance, but I want to see like my hold, for instance, uh, Dominate. Let's look at Dominate. So Dominate, if I take a look at my duration, the hold is 18 seconds. Mag 3, but when you turn on the support, you know, now we're up to 19 seconds. You know, it adds another second or two to the power. Uh, it's going to boost up, I think, my concentration. If I go ahead and activate that one, okay, that's going to boost my to hits. It looks like, what, 21%. I don't know why it's not showing up here. It should. So concentration is boosting 21%. The plus special should boost your to hit boosting. Uh, you know, I don't know. So sometimes I don't think mids is locked into all the different combinations of powers. And I can't, you know, sit, complain because it, it does what it does. It's really good um, way to build your characters. But anyway, I think some of the incarnates, especially these little secondary effects just don't show. But trust me when I tell you that, uh, you know, support, with the plus special that's going to boost all your healing your defenses your controls all these crazy ass things that you got going on with your build so there you go that is the idea here behind my good friend uh hortensis and uh if you can figure out his inspiration post that down in the comments below um I don't, I'll see if one of you guys can guess it. But anyway, it's not Psy. It's not what he's projecting from himself or his shield. It's something else. That's where the inspiration comes for, from for this guy. All right, there you go. That is the build. That's the idea. I'm going to go ahead and run a couple of, uh, you know, solo missions to, to show you some of these crazy pop uh, techniques or tactics or whatever that I'm going to, that I've been excited about and then i'll go ahead and run a couple team missions to show you how he does with you know five six seven different teammates and all the craziness that comes with that all right everybody have yourselves a good evening and i will catch you in the solo missions later